Hello, and thank you, as always, for taking the time to join me. In this talk, I will comment on certain developments concerning the Russian military campaign in Ukraine. Firstly, in early January of this year, I said in a talk that, according to my estimations, approximately 50,000 Russian soldiers have, thus far, died in the war in Ukraine. Now, up until a few weeks ago, Western politicians, Western journalists, Western military officials, Western so-called experts and Ukrainian officials had been peddling unsubstantiated and laughable claims that hundreds of thousands of Russian soldiers had been killed and wounded in Ukraine. Then, only a few weeks ago, Britain's Ministry of Defence publicly said that 50,000 Russian soldiers have lost their lives in Ukraine. Now, whilst I am not going to gloat by saying that the British MOD cited the 50,000 figure three months after I had first cited it, nonetheless, it serves as another reminder of just how degraded and inept the once proud British military has become. And that ineptness is on account of the British military having been deliberately infected by the ruling elite in the UK with the woke cancer. Given that the Royal Navy is not being permitted to guard the English Channel against what is a planned migrant invasion of Britain, it is evidently clear that the ruling elite in the UK have sinister plans for the British armed forces. My own view on the matter is that the ruling elite in the UK are bringing men of military age into Britain via the English Channel so that these men can one day form either a paramilitary force or a new army in Britain. Men who are completely beholden to the British ruling elite. Moving on. Since this time last year, when the appalling and catastrophic Ukrainian counteroffensive began, which was not actually a proper counteroffensive, but rather a suicide mission designed for propaganda purposes, the Russian High Command has employed a brutal and highly effective strategy to bleed to death both the Ukrainian military and NATO. Death by a thousand cuts is what the Russian military is subjecting the Ukrainian army and NATO to. With the Ukrainian army having incurred approximately 1.5 million losses, and with NATO stockpiles having become dangerously low, the day will soon come when Ukrainian forces will have no choice but to fall back en masse and surrender land. And let us not forget what Putin said on the day that the Russian military campaign in Ukraine began. He said, and I quote, The special military operation will take as long as, re as is required. Furthermore, it was the then US Joint Chiefs of Staff Chair, General Mark Milley, a complete buffoon, who owes his rank more to being a yes-man than to merit, who actually said that the Russian military would capture Kiev in 72 hours. Naturally, Western mainstream media deliberately attributed the 72 hours claim to the Kremlin as part of a propaganda campaign designed to belittle the Russian military campaign in the eyes of the unassuming and gullible masses of the Western world. Now, the consequences of death by a thousand cuts is apparent with the ongoing operation by the Russians in the Kharkov Oblast. Slowly 
but surely Russian forces are advancing in the Kharkov region with the Ukrainian military leadership faced with a hard and unenviable dilemma. Namely, to oppose the Russian operation in Kharkov, Ukrainian forces currently fighting in the Donbass would have to be sent to Kharkov. But to do that would give a free hand, more or less, to Russian forces in the Donbass. Again, the consequences of death by a thousand cuts. Moving on to my next submission, I believe that in the coming weeks, the Russian military will begin operations in the Sumy Oblast. And I believe that the objective will be for Russian forces fighting in Kharkov to link up with Russian forces in Sumy. From there, the Russian army would be in a prime position to begin the westward advance on Kiev, while Russian forces either in Belarus or in Russia could start the process of advancing on Kiev from the north of the Ukrainian capital. A possible pincer movement could ensue. Finally, from time to time, there is talk of certain NATO members, in particular France, deploying troops to Ukraine. And as a result of this talk, panic sets in amongst the masses, who fear that the world is facing World War Three. Well, firstly, NATO soldiers have been in Ukraine unofficially since the coup in the country in February of 2014. And many of them have died since the Russian military campaign began in Ukraine in February of 2022. Secondly, let us now think in hypothetical terms. If France, let's say, was to officially send soldiers to Ukraine and they were to be targeted and killed by Russian forces. This would not trigger Article 5 of NATO's founding treaty, as the French soldiers would not be in Ukraine in a NATO capacity. Rather, they would be there in a French capacity and only a French capacity. And thirdly, if NATO was to officially deploy troops to Ukraine, then this would result in a conventional war between America and Russia, which would quickly escalate into a nuclear war between the two superpowers. Given that America is the de facto leader of NATO, it follows that NATO will not deploy troops to Ukraine because America does not wish to bring about the destruction of itself and the world as a whole. Thank you as ever for listening.